Greetings and welcome to yet another installment of my Mass Effect multiplayer guides. <clears throat> Greetings and welcome to yet another installment of my multiplayer Mass Effect guides. Now I'm very pleased now to be able to uh, do my Vorcha guide. I have been looking forward to the Vorcha for quite some time. And I think the waiting paid off. It's a very very nice, very fun class. Uh, both the Vorcha Soldier and the Sentinel, though they're quite similar. And I'll get into that in a second. But uh, I do plan on making this my most detailed guide uh, thus far. So, with that said, um, I'm actually going to uh, be recording, as you see now, a perhaps external input so I can talk directly about the build, so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Um, and later on, uh, you'll see uh, gameplay with the builds I'm talking about, uh, as is conventionally the case uh, with me, and then I'll make comments on the actual gameplay. So uh, let's uh, talk about the Vorcha. Vorcha are, it's hard to say what they really are. They're not tanks, but they're something else. They're really hit and run endurance fighters, durable fighters. The bread and butter of the Vorcha is, of course, bloodlust. Bloodlust is its defining power. Uh, skipping bloodlust basically, well, takes away from what the Borcha is. Now, I base, there are tons and tons of variations, but I basically run two builds. On the one hand, I have with my Sentinel, the burn build, the flamer build, a weapons build, or, a, or I would call it the regen build. So let's get right into it. Expand here. So, of course, we see... Here are the first three evolutions, no need to go into that. But um, as I said, because this is my regen build, I kill primarily with my flamer and weapons. With this particular build, I'm going for the entire bottom row. So you can see uh, health regeneration, stacking, weapon damage, which I would probably choose for both, because as much as I like the flamer, the flamer is pretty situ It's not situational, but it's better just to have, have a weapon ready for firing. And then finally, I go for the uh, massive uh, health generation, regeneration for additional 100%. That's why whatever else might be to this build, I call it the regener regen build, the regeneration build. And as you can see, bloodlust is an incredibly uh, useful power. Even uh, without too many ranks, you can regenerate your health, which no other uh, class or race can do. And uh, you have increased speed, increased melee damage, and so on. So it's very, very nice. It's the signature power. It slows down your power use by 60%. However, I'll get to that in a second. Don't be worried. Don't worry too much about that. Because, uh, especially if you go for Flamer, which I'm going to talk about now. So Flamer, see, is uh, basically a... Uh, a wrist attachment uh, where you can shoot a flamethrower from. So uh, it's quite nice. <clears throat> I love damage, so, and I think it's a CQC uh, weapon, so as much as I thought it was useful to some extent, I tried that build out with the 7.5 meters, I went for damage here. More damage means enemies panic faster, they die faster. Then more damage. And finally, uh, my opinion is and you could switch this off if you wanted to exclusively fight Reapers, but considering that <clears throat> a Flamer already has significant effectiveness against armor, highly effective against armor, states in the description, it's very nice to add the uh, shield and barrier damage, especially when you're dealing with uh, Mooks, Cerberus, highly shielded Phantoms, and so on and so forth. Of course, it would be even more effective against armor if you chose this evolution, but that's really up to you. I, I prefer fighting Cerberus in many ways, um, even though I, I play both. I almost never play Geth, though, because I find them boring. So that's up to you, but considering how much the flame already does to armor, uh, I think this is a nice enhancement in rank 6. And you can see here that, uh, <clears throat> I'll get to the passives in a second, I do a nice 450 uh, points of damage per second. So that's uh, 5 seconds. So right there we have uh, 
basically 900, let's see, 900 and uh, another 1,800. We have uh, well over 2,000 points of damage in uh, one flamer shot, so that's quite nice. The other thing about flamer is what I think is quite unique about it. <clears throat> it is, is that it has an on and off switch. So you'll see uh, when you're playing, when I'm playing uh, later on, you can just turn it on and off when you want. Um, if you decide to go for the full duration of five seconds here, then yeah, you, you will have a recharge uh, rate of whatever it might be here, coupled by the uh, bloodlust penalty. However, what I've found to be very effective is using the flamer as an on and off switch. So you might want to panic an enemy and then finish it off with a with a weapon, which is what I do pre pretty frequently. If you only use it for two seconds, the cooldown will be much, much slower. So in a way, it's like cloak. The cooldown is relative to how long you use it. It's a very effective CQC um, weapon power. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of slack for this, but I personally don't like cluster grenades. I find them unwieldy. Uh, I find them... Well, let's be honest. I find cluster grenades to just float and fly all over the place. They're great for large crowds, but... To be perfectly honest, uh, after my Vorcha guide, I plan on making a mail pouring engineer guide because I'm very, very enthusiastic about arc grenades. The, for example, let's compare arc grenades and cluster grenades. Yes, cluster grenades do uh, more damage overall, but arc grenades are a lot more accurate. Um, they have uh, better crowd control because they, they stun and electrify, and uh, you have the nice damage over time uh, evolution, which I personally prefer. But I'm not going to get into arc grenades here. But yeah, it is entirely possible to run a Vorcha build with uh, with uh, just cluster grenades and no flamer. In fact, uh, some of my friends, very, very good player, uh, you might know him, Czech Kroner, Kroner. He's, in my opinion, probably, well, I don't know, he's one of the most skilled guys with the Claymore. He's a lot better with the Claymore than I am. And he, he doesn't use flamer. He, uh, he likes doing a two-weapon loadout. Sometimes he'll use a Claymore and a Black Widow, or what have you, and that's, that's I mean, he's a great player, but of course that works for him. I just don't like Cluster Grenades, I prefer to have the nice Flamer handy. Um, but yeah, Cluster Grenades are really good if you know how to use them, or it just suits your play style. But as extensive as I want to make this guide, I'm not going to go into uh, Cluster Grenades too much, because I'm, I'm, I have limited time, so I'll talk about the two builds I use. So let's look at Vorcha Resilience. Now, for Vorcha Resilience, I basically took what I maintain to be the best of all worlds. Because I want to maximize flamer damage, uh, I do take damage and capacity. Capacity is less of an issue, like I said, because of the cooldown, but the nice damage is not bad. Then I go for 5 power damage. Finally, because uh, even though the Vorcha does have assault rifle and shotgun uh, benefits, uh, which, of course, you could use if you wanted. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of two-weapon loadouts. That's just my opinion. Uh, for most things, I just end up not using it. So a couple of times I've run a shotgun assault rifle build, and I just end up using my assault rifle like uh, pre pretty infrequently, I'd say. So, um, yeah, but it's certainly a, a possibility. Personally, I just prefer... Uh, to have extra damage, the nice 10% extra weapon damage, then 35%. So in a way, you have the best of, of both worlds. You have the maxed out power damage for your flamery um, attack, and you have a nice hefty 20% uh, weapon damage bonus, which is quite nice as well. Um, but I'm not going to just demonstrate them, but uh, alter alternative builds, like the one my friend Kroner uses, I believe, and I'm pretty sure that he does this with every uh, build, it's all weapon weapon, headshot, and so on. So that's very effective too. Um, but like I said, that my, my uh, play style with this particular character is more... Uh, I like using my flamer. But that said, um, if you do choose assault rifles and shotguns, you can have a very nice cooldown still, and only slightly less weapon damage, and I don't think it's that significant. And, uh, you know, you can switch on and off. Uh, for example, you might want to carry a shotgun for close range and a assault, assault rifle for long range, or uh, you know, any anything in between. That's that's going to be up to you. But uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a very uh, good way of playing as well. But 
that's just not my way. So I, I, I usually just take a shotgun and try to get it close. Although, you know, who knows, maybe I'll, I'll experiment with other things as well. Do some more experimentation. Fitness, well, because this is the regen build for fitness, I'm going for the entire bottom row, as you can see here. So, durability, shield recharge, and finally a fitness expert. So this build is all about using flamer and weapons to kill things. Uh, that, that's, I barely do any uh, melee because it's, and it's not spec for melee at all in this particular build. Um, and I use flamer, note the name burn. And uh, so this, this is this build. But let's look at the alternative build, the other one I, I enjoy equally and is also very effective. So, uh, let's switch here to my Vortex Soldier, whose name is uh, Slasher, <laughs> which kind of, uh, anyway, kind of makes sense given his, uh, his duty and his role. So Slasher here, the Vortex Soldier, is a different build entirely. Um, I wouldn't say entirely, of course, still makes use of Bloodlust. But instead of the regen build, it is a, a pretty much a pure melee build. So for rank 4, I go for the stack and melee damage. I go for weapon damage, that's the same. And then finally, I go for movement and melee. So to really increase that mobility, uh, the ability to uh, dish out rapid uh, melee attacks, that's what I choose for Bloodlust. So it's really the opposite. Now that said, I, I think there's nothing... I mean, the melee stacks are nice, but uh, if you want to run a melee build with a regeneration instead, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, it wouldn't be my preference, but remember, once you get those re health regen stacks, they're very, very significant. Um, you won't, even with them, you won't be able to uh, withstand sustained fire from multiple, say, assault troopers and centurions firing at you, but still, it's very significant. But, um, you know, those of you who know my builds, I tend to be an all-or-nothing guy, so I, I don't like to mix it up too much. This is a pure melee build. Um, so in the end, we have a very nice... Uh, very nice 10% uh, speed bonus, uh, which, which I believe, uh, which I believe, and I'm not entirely sure, would, should stack, uh, should stack with each uh, with each kill. Um, I believe, and you still have a nice 65% uh, regeneration bonus, which, uh, which isn't too bad at all. Total 10%. So, uh, very nice. Now, in this particular build, I skip Flamer, because I already have a Flamer build. This is a melee build. And what do you have left? Carnage. I've always liked Carnage a lot. It's a fun power. It's not, uh, pardon me, it's not OP or anything like that, but it's very good. Um, and in particular, because this build, I like, I basically what I like running with is a Grawl with a, with a blade attachment, and I'll get into that, um, for a sec in a second, and um, Carnage uh, is very useful to me because, particularly when I'm fighting Guardians, uh, the Grawl is it's difficult to get mail uh, mail slot shots on the, with the Grawl. It can be done sometimes, but even with the accuracy mod, so Carnage is handy. It pops their shields up, uh, and I can get nice headshots or bodies. It kills them pretty quickly. But more importantly. Um, Carnage is nice crowd control because at the end of the day you can't always do melee. So you basically have a nice range power with this um, that does uh, quite decent damage. In this particular build, I uh, because Carnage, unlike Flamer, has a pretty hefty uh, cooldown, particularly with the 60% uh, penalty, I, I like maxing out my power damage. And if, in, in my opinion, if you use a pretty powerful weapon, like like the Grawl or the Claymore or whatever, then missing out on 10% weapon damage is not going to be the end of the world. Um, so I, I like to have my shotgun and assault rifle uh, weight reduction for this particular build. And then finally, uh, as unsurprising as it is, for fitness, I max out all the um, nice melee attributes. So 4 damage, 5 martial artist, which is key. Martial artist is very important. And rank six uh, melee synergy. 
I mean, it's, it's very significant. I think 30% uh, weapon increased damage is even better than most classes, as far as I can I can tell. I think it's better than the Tarion. Um, so, and you also see that the health and shields are, are somewhat lower, but you still have some basic regeneration, which is very helpful. But this is kind of hit and run. Um, the Vorcha soldier otherwise is not, in my opinion, a true tank. Um, it's, a, it's a durable hit-and-run fighter. It's a dirty fighter, you know, and that's what's so fun about it. It has a very fast dodge, um, very, pretty fast run animation. Um, you can really get out of trouble quite quickly, and uh, that re regeneration is very, very helpful. Now, uh, a couple of things to say about um, about the melee. The melee itself is not that powerful, even when you max out all your gear and you put everything, uh, you put everything like a shotgun blade attachment and uh, some of the new gear, the boost melee and um, things like that. You, you, so, I, I, in my experience, you can't outright kill apart from um, basic troopers. Most enemies with a with a melee, but what you can't have you melee, but what you can do is chain it. Um, what I actually like to do with this build is I like to use a growl shot, stagger them, and then follow up with a heavy melee. That's my personal preference. Um, it's all other reason I like using the growl in this particular build is uh, phantoms. Uh, phantoms, regardless of what people say, if you don't have some kind of crowd control and you really need to run away from them and do other things, with a growl you can really handle them head on. Uh, makes it very very effective. So, um, but let me let's let's get into weapons in a second. Here we go. So we're sticking with the uh, with the uh, slasher, the uh, melee build here. And you, as you can see, I'm using my Grawl with bl nice blade attachment. And you do run out of ammo fairly quickly, but that's significant. That uh, and I have 145% cooldown, which isn't too bad. Uh, but that 25% is pretty significant. You know, uh, other things you might want to consider are consumables, melee boosters. I always try to use all of those when I'm using a melee build. The Vorture of Heavy Melee is very quick. It tends not to lock in into things, but, um, you know, it, it's still very, very good. Um, and if you can if you can stagger them first, then you can get some nice chain attacks. It's, it's very, very effective. And like I said, that 30% weapon damage boost is... Uh, it's pretty significant, I think. Um, you know, cause you're, that lasts for 20 seconds, which is pretty significant as well. So you want to basically just max out everything uh, regarding melee and, and use whatever consumables you can to boost your melee. So that's very good. So switch back to the uh, Sentinel here, Burner. Uh, so weapons, I was using the Grawl the other day uh, just because... Uh, the the issue with phantoms in general, I, I do want to address this with phantoms, is that uh, phantoms are a problem. You need to acknowledge that phantoms are a problem. They are very easy for some classes, like the Asari uh, classes, um, Def Vanguard. I think the new I haven't explored them too much, but I think the new Phoenix classes are quite good. They obviously have powers that can really just deal with phantoms pretty quickly, but. As a soldier or sentinel, a sort of weapon-based class, which relies at best on um, some powers which are useful but not, you know, ultimate crowd control, um, you're going to need something else. And even the best players, like my friend Croner that I play with, he uses Claymore, he sometimes has a lot of trouble with Phantoms too. I mean, I know, I, for example, when I use the Claymore on this build, it's very powerful. I could have sworn, no, I know, I've gotten three direct headshots on phantoms, and it, they're still up, or the, maybe a third shot kills them. Um, unlike an infiltrator, or some other class, you can't sneak up when they're waiting for you, uh, because they'll notice you, and just pop a headshot. Sometimes you can. Uh, so I've been, to be honest, I'm not going to lie, and why I'm going to say that for both of these builds, nothing is prescriptive. However, um, I'm just say... Before I forget, for the melee build, I certainly would enjoin you to use some kind of shotgun with a blade attachment and a and a or and or a pistol with a melee stunner. Uh, you want to get that 25% melee damage. You really want to be a melee machine. That's the way to do it. That said, uh, so I I just been sort of cycling through uh, different weapons. You know, the claymore is 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 very good uh, as well. 
Um, one thing I really like running with in general, it's kind of like my favorite all-purpose shotgun, is uh, is the Wraith. Um, but for this particular build, I would stick with the Grawl because it's a melee build. Sorry, no, this is not the melee build. This is this is the weapon flamer build. Pardon me, I'm a bit out of it. So yeah, I like the Wraith because as I mean, it makes flamer ridiculously have a ridiculously low cooldown. It's quite accurate, uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's a really good all-purpose shotgun. It kind of handles everything. Except Phantom. Ph Phantoms, you know, I was playing with Lord Zeke, and you know, you might know him from some of his own videos. And he made a good point about Phantoms just being kind of cheesy in a way. I mean, the simple fact is that they their hand palm death cannon can shoot you from three feet away or three hundred. It just doesn't matter. And that's why I think it's really important to have some kind of crowd control. Um, that said, in my later videos, I probably will be uh, running. I imagine with the uh, with the wraith, and try to do my best to deal with phantoms, uh, just because I like I want to display the wraith a little bit. And I think it's a really great shotgun. You're right; it doesn't people it doesn't pack the power of the, of the claymore, but it has a much lower weight, which is good if you want to use powers, um, and has two shots, which is pretty useful as well. Uh, has a fast reload, which you can enhance by reload canceling, um, and I like the look of it too. Um, so it's just, it's kind of, I call it for me, it's the the ultimate utility shotgun, the Wraith. Um, so I guess for this build, I mean, like I said, nothing is prescriptive. I've, I've even, I had the misfortune, as you can see, of getting the Crusader 4 finally. Ha ha ha. I have, um, I have Hurricane 1, which I got the last time, and I've been getting Crusaders. I actually tried it out. It's, it's okay. It's nothing special. I mean, like I said, it, you might as well use a pistol, because... The slugs, I mean, yeah, the only good thing about it is the cover penetration. And um, let's not talk about the Rieger Carbine, most broken weapon in the game. The Claymore is always a classic, and um, I'm pretty good with it, but I, I still prefer uh, I still prefer to use the, uh, the Wraith. I just feel kind of lighter on my feet with it. So if you're going to go for shotguns, uh, yeah, by all means. You know, and um, for assault rifles, I don't know... Um, one thing I tried, which was pretty good, is uh, the saber and the uh, and the um, the wraith. So saber for long range, medium range engagements, and then switching up. If you want to use the two weapon loadouts, quite quite nice as well. But you know, weapons are not prescriptive. I just you tend to use what I like to use. Um, before people accuse me on the forums of me saying, "Oh, you need to use this weapon," and if you don't, no, you use whatever weapon you feel comfortable with, whatever you're good with. But uh, for shotguns, I'd say it comes down to the Claymore, the Grawl, and the Wraith, for me personally. Um, if you want to mess around with an assault rifle, uh, you know, you can do that too. Um, so nothing prescriptive about that. Definitely for my, uh, <clears throat> for my melee build, though, I, 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 I wouldn't say it's prescriptive, but if you want to max out your melee damage, choose a pistol, some pistol with a melee stunner, and uh, choose a shot or a shotgun with a melee stunner. And you should be okay. So that's pretty much that for these. Uh, these this, this, yeah, these are my builds. And um, so, in a little bit, uh, sometime later, I'll be adding the stuff to this in terms of gameplay. Uh, and yeah, it, this is the uh, first part, of, as you, as it were, of the Vorcha the guide to all things Vorcha. Trying to make it as an extensive, as extensive as possible. I know there's going to be a lot of enthusiasm in the coming weeks for the Vorcha, and so I'd like to add to that. They're really fun. And, uh, yeah, so get ready for some gameplay where I'll actually implement some of the things I've been talking about. Uh, so take care. Hi, this is part of the guide and the commentary to the actual gameplay. So, uh, and there are basically three sections. I have to make two separate videos because they're quite big. This is part one, uh, and then the next one will be part two. Um, and here, what you see here is, uh, well, it's the new map, and I'm very unfamiliar with both new maps. I only played them a few times, so I made some mistakes, but eh, who cares? I know people would complain if I didn't use the new map, so here I was doing that. And uh, what we have here is exactly what I talked about. It is the, the Vortra Sentinel Flamer uh, regen build using the Wraith. 
and I got some nice incendiary ammo, armor piercing, a, a shredder a mod on. And um, yeah, and I make some good use of what I was talking about, I think. So, um, what we see here is uh, basically a straightforward shotgun build. And like I said, I like the Wraith because of its uh, lightweight and versatility. And, uh, basically, the idea behind a board shot is pretty simple. It's just uh, keep on killing things. When you're soloing, I think that's a minimal problem in a way because you're able to keep your bloodlust uh, on constantly. However, that's not always... A uh, that easy when you're not so. I do want to talk about this. And if you play in a large group, particularly with other Vorcha, I'm not going to use the term kill stealing in the traditional sense, but when you can't get a kill, let's say you kill an enemy worth, I don't know, 1,500 uh, points, and you get something like, I don't know, 1,200 assists, but someone else gets a 300 kill, that means you're not going to get your bloodlust uh, stack, which is deleterious to you as a war chef. It's just the way it is, unfortunately. Uh, and I don't see a solution to that. Just try to kill as often as you can. But even so, without the stack, Bloodlust is quite useful. You see me running around, you do still have regen. But the stack is really, really good. And you see how fast I regenerate in some cases as well. You also see a great deal of agility, and you'll see them in other, other videos. So, uh, to me, the Vorcha combines the best of all worlds. I mean, you have some very good durability through the regeneration. You have some really good agility. And you're pretty fast on your feet as well. And we see what I do with Flamer. Uh, Flamer, as you see, it can be quite powerful. It's, it can be used as a, a rapid follow-upper. Follow you know, shoot and then use it. You can just use it when you can. One thing, uh, whenever you feel like, one thing I think that's quite useful about Flamer is uh, I find Nemesis annoying. You can't always get shots in them because they're always moving around, so it's hard to get a headshot, let alone, well, a body shot, let alone a headshot. A Flamer takes care of that. If they're moving around a lot, you don't really need to aim. Just keep the flame on them, and it'll burn them down pretty quickly. And uh, Phantoms, you see, are somewhat of a problem, but I think you need, you need to be a bit surreptitious and, and cautious with them. Don't, try not, try to avoid head-on head conflicts with the, uh, the phantoms, unless you have a Grawl, maybe, uh, with the rate that's not an option. But it does take care of them. Uh, only a couple in this video, because I only did to wait for. And it's pretty handy. Um, and we see the nice uh, Vorta grab, which is quite uh, humorous, I think, and quite cool. But basically, the Vorta is all just about killing and you know, taking advantage of your bloodlust. In a way, there aren't elaborate strategies, although I think there is a strategy of the flamer. Like I said, you can see it's, it's an on and off switch. You can turn it on, you can turn it off. And when you do that, when you do that, you will see, uh, you will see how quickly it recharges. And even if you don't, if you have a lightweight weapon, the recharge rate on flamer will be quite, uh, quite quick. So it's, it's very, very useful. And the important thing about Bloodlust to realize is it doesn't matter how you get your kills. In fact, I don't know if it's in this video or in the others, but if you rocket multiple enemies, you'll get multiple stacks on your Bloodlust. The Bloodlust is really, uh, it doesn't matter how you kill them. As long as you kill them, be it with the Flamer, Cluster Grenades, uh, Shotgun, Assault Rifle, it doesn't matter, miss Missiles. And that's, that's the beauty of uh, Bloodlust. So... What I see in the Vorcha is a sort of the, the ultimate, as they, they called it in the original announcement, utilitarian soldier. Um, you know, you don't have these mind-blowingly powerful uh, instant kill or you know, abilities, but you do have a staggering amount of durability, very good speed, fantastic agility, and all, that all combined makes, I would argue, for the best sort of soldier slash kind of fighter uh, class available. Uh, you know, they they really can move far far more quickly than the others in a way. Well, if you combine their agility, and uh, that lets you survive phantom attacks, you can dodge out of the way, things like that. But yeah, the flamer is very useful. Like I said, when you can't hit an enemy, 
that's when you should, I think, a good time to use it. If they're just moving around too much. Otherwise, it's like I said, a very, very simple principle. Just kill as much as you can uh, to keep that bloodlust going. Once you have that bloodlust stack for three, the regen is almost instantaneous. It's insane. The only thing it can kill you, I don't know if it's, no, it's another video, I believe, is probably a turret uh, or a grenade. If it, it's that quick. Now, turrets uh, are a pet peeve of mine. People never prioritize them, just leave them there. It really annoys me. Because they're actually the most dangerous enemy in the game in a lot of ways. They just mow you down. And uh, so, anyway, just a couple of things, like I said, about most of the stuff I already talked about in, uh, in the previous stuff, uh, previous part of this guide, you know, where I actually show the build and stuff. But this is the same build as before, just using the Wraith. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy this little snippet. Um, up next, uh, in, the, in part uh, part two and three, well, actually just part two, I have to make two separate videos, you'll see uh, you'll see the, the melee build, which I like a lot, not quite as much as the, as the weapon regen build. And uh, I'll also do a slightly different variation of Reapers, so I'm going back to Giant, uh, with, against, uh, with Claymore, with, with a two-weapon loadout, Cl Claymore and the Harrier. I just did that for fun. I, I don't like taking two weapons. But the uh, Vorge is very good against Reapers, and you'll see why. I mean, it's Banshee Space Magic has barely any effect on physical regeneration. And uh, it's very, very good. In that particular video, I'm uh, I'm using a basically a, a a Reaper weapon Vortra, which simply means that I'm using a Vortra whose uh, flamethrower is spec to destroy armor as opposed to barriers. Um, and I think eventually I probably will drop the melee build because as nice as it is, uh, it's not as much my playstyle as killing with weapons, and what I'll just do is take the soldier, uh, maybe make him a Cerberus uh, kind of forge up with the flamethrower in, uh, in barrier and, and shields, and then I'll take the, uh, yeah, the sentinel and, and put his, uh, well he's already spec for that, um, put his uh, flamethrower for, for armor, and then I'll just have basically, I'm good to go, I'll have forge for every occasion. Anyway, that's that, um, and let's move on in the next video to the uh, melee build. Watch it.